Assalamualaikum. Today, um, our group will be presenting Doctrine of Pleasure and Safeguards for Public Servants under the Federal Constitution and Laws in Malaysia. So, the presenter would be me, Shoyu Pasofem Dizai Hussein, Nurul Ali Sofia, Nurliza Nur Misran, and Maria Zainuddin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Maria Binti Zainuddin. Metric number 1921140. I will be explaining for the part of introduction, which is in English law, the doctrine of pleasure first emerged. This means that the Crown has the right to terminate a civil servant employment at any time for any cause. The Crown is not obligated by any employment service contracts even if they involve in the crown. In other words, if a civil servant is fired from his job, he cannot sue for unpaid wages or other compensation. In India, the doctrine of pleasure, pleasure is codified in Article 3.1.10, which is perhaps one of the most constitution most disputed provision. The constitution contains extensive provision for the federal and the state services in Article 3.1.10. 0923 while in malaysia referring to article 132 132 bracket 2a it is stated except as expressly provided by this constitution every person who is a member of any of the services mentioned in paragraph a bracket b bracket c bracket d f and Bracket H of class bracket 1 holds office during the pleasure of the Tiang Putan Agong and except as expressly provided by the constitution of the state. Every person who is a member of the public service of a state holds office during the pleasure of the ruler or Yang Deputuan Negeri. This explains that their appointment is based on the dictionary power of government. Their position is based on mercy of the government and the employee can be dismissed without even having prior disciplinary case. That's all my presentation for introduction. I will pass I will pass for the next presenter. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So now I will be presenting uh, the position of a public servant in the constitution. So in today's society it is held uh, together by state provided service. So the modern state's administration revolves around the public sector. The quality and commitment of a country's public officials ultimately determines its economic, social, and educational policies. The armed forces and the judicial and legal service. The general public service of the federation, the police force, the joint uh, federal state public service, the public service of each state, and the education service are all defined as public services in Article 132, uh, Subsection 1 of the Federal Constitutions. So employees of statute, statutory bodies, public corporations, universities, or any other body or authority established by federal or state, state law are not considered public servants under the Constitution. So there are three conventions governing the British civil service. So the civil services are permanent and non-political, which means they will stay in the position even if the government is changed. So they are required to be loyal to the government and make a decision with the same energy, whether they agree or not, and also they remain anonymous and are protected from any public criticism and praise. Uh, VS means low state that there are nine important elements that govern the Malaysian public service. So public employees work for the YDPA or the state ruler who appoints them and they are, they are paid from a pool of federal and state funds. So public employees are also expected to be politically a political, a political and their entry into the service is based on the equality principles in Article 8 of the Federal Federal Constitution. And public employees also hold office at the YDPAs or the state's rulers' pleasure and they are not entitled to compensation, bonus or pensions. 
So these fundamental components have been used in the service for more than 50 years. But throughout that time, the service has changed uh, and necessita necessitating new strategies uh, for handling the entire situation. According to Malaysia's federal constitution, the public service is limited to the departments stated in Article 132, and most crucially, it is gui guided by the idea that uh, public servants serve at the YDKA's pleasure. And the public service distinct constitutional uh, standing has prevented the challenge of defining what the public service is and who is a public servant as in the United Kingdom. So on the, on the other hand, the idea that a position is held at the whim of the monarch extends the idea of common law. It has been established that civil officials work for the crown and its leisure and that the crown is their employer. They may be fired without explanation. So this is the crucial component of the civil services since it, since it unifies the government and sets it apart from private employment. Uh, since their employer, the Crown, he has the right to fire them at any time, in theory, civil officials do not have job security. So the ability to fire someone at will is now largely irrelevant due to the em emergence of legal safeguards against unfair dismissal and rigorous uh, judicial requirements for natural justice. Job security, however, involves more than just defense against unjust dismissal. This is so that uh, the government, a strong employer, can influence employment laws through a variety of administrative and legal ways. Um, all, all the public servants serve at the pleasure of YBPA, ruler or governor, and posts may be eliminated. And a ministry or service may be decommissioned decommissioned de, de or privatized. Parliament has the authority to refuse to fund a service. Therefore, they do not have a security in their tenure. Despite a written contract of employment, a public servant's uh, terms of service may be changed without his consent. Language of proficiency in house training courses or the need to pass an examination may be imposed as pass entry requirement, post entry requirements. And these, however, are not absolute rights. So if the YDPA believes a public servant is guilty of negligence, irregularity, or misconduct, he may reduce or withhold his pension. Okay, next I will be uh, explaining about the appointment and security of the tenure. So in the case of Tan Tak Seng uh, against Suruhanjaya Perkhidmatan and another and others, uh, a school teacher's dismissal was contested on the grounds that it was illegal and in violations of Article 5, the right to, to life and personal liberty, which includes tenure security and eight, um, Article 8, which is on equality. So uh, Gopal Sri Ram, federal court judge, stated in the Court of Appeals on Article 5 that the Constitution should be freely read in order to carry out the genuine meaning of the federal constitution's framework. The learned judge went on to say that the term life in Article 5 should be given a broad and liberal definition uh, that, com that encompasses all those aspects that are an essential component of life itself and those matters that contribute to the creation of life. So the appellant's discharge was unlawful and unconstitutional because he was denied the opportunity to obtain profitable work without a fair hearing. However, the federal court determined that a liberal interpretation of the term personal liberty in Article 5 was incorrect in pihak berkuasa in the case of pihak berkuasa negeri Sabah um, against Sugumar Balakrishnan and others. And in the case of Lee Kuan Wo against public prosecutor, it is decided in 2009 that the federal court provided a new interpretation of the term in Article 5 echoing the Court of Appeals liberal stance in the Tan Tat Seng case. In light of this, 
uh, Articles 132 and 135, uh, security of tenure provisions for public employees will need to be crafted in a way that is consistent with the more liberal and lenient interpretation of Article 5 at once by the aforementioned decisions. So among other things, Article 132 provides that the public employee may be fired at YDPA's discretion. In light of the analysis of this case, of the case law in these articles, it is first important to consider whether the position of public servant is one that is held under contract rather than one that is based on the YDPA's prerogative power. Uh, the House of Lords in the United Kingdom held that the Home Civil Service Employment is subject to royal prerogative in Council of Civil, in the case of Council of Civil Service Unions against Minister uh, for Civil Service. So the definition of a prerogative uh, power as anything the executive government can lawfully accomplish without the authority of an Act of Parliament was upheld by the House of Lords. So their appointment is based on the discretionary power of the government and their position is based on the mercy of the government and the, and the employee can be dismissed without even having a prior disciplinary case and appointment, promotion and transfer. This is to re reinstate the common law position. However, it is subject to the federal constitution. Okay, holding of office during pleasure would include the subject of appointment, promotions, transfer, salaries, and other benefits. That, that's all from me. Thank you. So next is the contractual relationship. So if there is a contract in place governing the employment relationship, the principle of holding office for pleasure will be irrelevant. So based on common law, the common law precedence support the theory that the contractual basis of relationship will limit the Crown's ability to dismiss a civil servant at will. A sequence of cases uh, clearly suggests the presence of contractual or semi-contractual relationship. But on the other hand, the non-contractual status is also strongly backed by authorities. For example, in the case of Indian Revenue Commissioners and Hambrook, it was decided that the relationship is generally non-contractual except in exceptional circumstances. So for example, also in the case of Attorney General for New South Wales and Perpetual Trustee Co Limited and others, the Privy Council held that the relationship between the government and the civil servant was not one of master and servant. So these cases, just now that I mentioned, demonstrate that the proposition that the most important employment terms have contractual or quasi-contractual force is viable. So it is based on the justification that the common law precept the government workers serve at this the government workers serve at the pleasure of the crown is not violated by the enforceability of some conditions. So in other words, um, even while the crown is required to abide by some of the terms of the contract, it is still free to dismiss the civil servants as it deems appropriate. In Malaysian law, so concerning Article 132 in Clause 2A of the Federal Constitution, um, it became a question if a contractual provision is contrary to the mentioned statute. So we refer to the case of Government of Malaysia and Rosaline only back in. The judge held that the contract between the government and the public servant is a specific contract because when she was appointed to her post, her status, her rights and obligations were no longer determined by the contract but by her employer which is the government. So this case was also distinguished from the case of Haji Arifin and government of the state of Pahang. So according to the judge, clause 2A is subject to all written laws in the nation, not just the constitution. However, Judge may entirely disagree um, according to the learned judge interpretation of Article 4 of the Constitution, um, any written law that violates the Constitution is null and void. The majority, however, decided that a service agreement that restricts the scope of Clause 2A may nonetheless be legal as long as the public servant is not entitled to any kind of compensation in the event that the condition is not fulfilled. So, however, 
the YDPA or the state rulers are not constrained in their ability to appoint and dismiss officials at whim according to both the majority and also the minority views. So despite the outcome of Haji Arifin's case, um, it is argued that a public employee who is dismissed without cause or given money in place of notice is not entitled compensation. So according to Article 125 in Clause 2, a public employee who is dismissed has the right to be heard and other rights that entitle him to pay for a violation uh, of the clause processes. So all in all, I can, we can say that with the exception of specific procedural protections under Article 135, a public servant has no protection against uh, termination, dismissal or rank reduction. So even if a public servant has had their employment improperly terminated, dismissed or lowered in rank in line with Article 135, but they have been reinstated by a court, the government may still do so by completing the necessary procedures. So in the case of Amalgamated Union of Public Employees and Permanent Secretary Health, Justice Winslow said that among other things, a public servant has no right or lien to his office or his pension despite the procedural justice requirements established by Article 135 of the Constitution. Moving on to the next uh, point, which is protections for public servants. So a public a public official serves at the pleasure of the young Gipperton Agum, whereas uh, employees of each state's public service serve at the pleasure of the state's ruler. Even while, while they serve at the pleasure of the king and ruler of the state and hence lack tenure security, it does not mean that they can be dismissed at the whim of the king and ruler of the state. The federal constitution provides certain safeguards under Article 135. However, Article 135 does not grant any rights to office, pension, or immunity from dismissal. So, to determine if members of a particular service benefit from the rights outlined in Article 135, we need to carefully analyze the terms. The federal court ruled in Selva Raju Anak Laki Punya that the public servant no longer had the right to be heard due to Article 135, Clause 2D. For instance, as determined in Abdul Salam bin Hussein, where members of the military forces are not entitled to the rights guaranteed by Article 135 of the Constitution. So, the protections only apply in circumstances of dismissal uh, and rank reduction. An immigration officer in Munasami was appointed to the position of assistant passport officer. Later, it was discovered that he had lied about his school background and was actually underqualified for the position. His employment with the company came to an end and he was returned to his prior role. He asserted that he should have been given a chance to be heard. So the appellant's integrity, effectiveness and good behaviour have not been questioned, according to the court. So the appellant was as it stated, underqualified, and this is the only basis on which the respondent claims to have taken only basis on which the res sorry, uh, and this is the only basis on which the respondent claims to have taken action. So another example that we can refer to is that we can refer to the case of Surinda Singh Kanda and Government of Malaysia. So in this case, it was raised whether Inspector Kanda lack of access to a chance to revise or refute the report compromised the educate adjudicating officers hearing. Based on the foregoing, it is clear that the issue involves a challenge to the legality of a police officer's termination in violation of Article 135.1 of the Constitution. So according to Article uh, Article 140, Clause 6, the Police Service Commission may assign a particular officer in the force with power and responsibility from the Commission. So the court held that the power could be transferred as long as the commission was closely watching it. However, the authority to dismiss police officers has not been delegated, as doing so could lead to a situation in which the officer being fired has a higher rank than the officer who is firing him. I would say that uh, the dismissal and reduction in rank will be interrelated with the right to natural justice. This is because when a person is being dismissed, obviously you wanted to be heard the reason of what happened, uh, uh, of what happened either from his part or the other party. Therefore, we need 
we need to see in other cases that protects the right natural justice. So the court must make sure that there is no chance of discrimination during the decision-making process. The court emphasized that the right to be heard requires that all parties to be given the opportunity to be heard. So we can refer in the case of Rohana and University Science Malaysia, where the appellant in the case was not given the chance to fully discover all of the defendant's documents. So one of the questions offered by the right to be heard is whether a public employee has two separate rights of representation, namely mm, the right to demonstrate his innocence and in the event that he is found guilty, the right to lessen the sentence that would be imposed. So in this case, the respondent in ultra uh, so uh, the respondent in ultra body's case worked as a hospital attendant at Penang General Hospital. In accordance with general general order four of the public officers conduct and discipline chapter D, uh, general order seventy eighty the general uh, which is known as the public officers conduct and discipline order seventy eighty. So the respondent urine sample tested positive for morphine. So the first appellant issued him a show cause letter to initiate dis disciplinary proceedings for dismissal or reduction in rank. Um, the, the public officer is prohibited from acting in a way that defames or discredits the public service according to that provision. So evidently, his drug use would have damaged the reputation of the public service. But the respondent afterwards denied being addicted to drugs and told the first appellant that there was a chance that the relevant urine <coughs> the relevant sorry the relevant urine sample might not actually be his uh, but rather be someone else. So he begged for a second chance to get his urine tested because he didn't want to ruin his outstanding service record. A letter telling the respondent that he had been dismissed in accordance with the general order, 36 of the general orders, was forwarded to him by the first appellate. So the general orders, according to the federal court, are in line with the principles of natural justice and procedural fairness and have sufficiently complied with the Article 135, subsection 2 of the, of the federal constitution. The inclusion of the right to an oral hearing in the right to be heard is another issue that needs to be explored. The Privy Council emphasized that a hearing must be conducted, but it does not have to be an oral hearing in reference to the case of Narja Singh and Government of Malaysia and others. The word hearing in Regulation 27 of Chapter D does not necessarily relate to an oral hearing. It also refers to a written hearing. The fact that the public servant is given a full and adequate opportunity to explain himself uh, is, regulator, is Regulation 27's most significant feature, feature. Even in the case of Inspector General of Police and Alan Noor Kamai, the Supreme Court put an end to this argument when it ruled that a public servant has the right to a hearing as long as he is given the chance to, be, to, be, to present his case and no prejudice can be derived from it. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Maria Binti Zaindin, metric number 192-1140. I will be explaining, explaining for the part of conclusion, which is the last part. As for the conclusion, for all the facts and the aspects that have been discussed and emphasized crucially, it can be concluded that the doctrine of pleasure and safeguard for public servant under the federal constitution and laws in Malaysia plays an important role in maintaining the position of the public servant in our country. Hence, it is undeniable that in the modern administrative era, the role of civil servant is important and it's an indispensable to the country's governance. The minister creates policies and legislature pass law, but it is the responsibility of public servant to carry out these policies and laws in an efficient and effective manner. While the political executive benefits from the assistance of bureaucracy in running the nation, certain limitations are outlined in the constitution in order to protect the civil servant.
a competent and a competent and incorrupt civil service or public service in Malaysia is essential constitutional element as well as practical necessity. It is not only responsible for the effective delivery of policy but also for the rational pragmatic and continuous formulation of policy in a democratic country it is desirable for the public service to be politically independent and incapable of serving governments of various political entities with equal enthusiasm that's all for our presentation for our group thank you very much